Thank you for being with me here today and welcome to Coming Out series. And in this series, I'll be sharing together with you how some people in the Bible days, some people in the scriptures, went from coming into crisis and how they lived their lives within the crisis and how they came out of the crisis, what became of their lives after the crisis experience. So in this coming out series, I'll be sharing lots of stories, lots of revelation and insights from the word of God with you. Thank you very much for joining me here today. My name is Olumide Odessaya. Shall we pray? King of glory, the Lord who changes times and seasons, we bless your holy name. Lord, as we share together insights and inspiration from your word, we ask that you release strength unto us to go through our own times of crisis in the name of Jesus. We shall be better for it. We shall be stronger in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. So I'll share with us the pre-crisis event in the life of Job. The things that were working for Job before he went into the crisis that he went into. And we're going to see those things in Job chapter 1 from verse 2 to verse 5. Three things quickly. The first one was that Job had a fruitful and a lively family. Scripture says in verse 2 that he, was, he had seven sons and three daughters. He had children. Of course, he had a wife. He had a family that was together, healthy family, lively family. And that may also be your story, that before this COVID-19 experience, your family was joyful, your family was together, you had enough, you had enough to share within yourself and to also give to others things we are working for you. The same thing happened to Job before the crisis. Number two was that Job had a great and a flourishing enterprise. He had men servant, people working with him and working for him. He had cattle, he had livestock, he had camels, he had sheep, he had goats. Job had a flourishing enterprise. The third thing that we see in the life of Job before the crisis was that Job was a man that was faithfully serving God. The Bible says in verse 5 that every morning he rose up to offer sacrifices unto God concerning his children and concerning his business, his enterprise, everything that Job did, he handed them over to God every single day. So Job was faithfully serving God, number one. He had a lively and a healthy family. Number two, Job had a great and a flourishing enterprise. Number three, Job was faithfully serving God. So before the crisis, these were the things that Job had working for him and going on in his life. This same may be of you before this COVID-19 crisis. However, we can also learn from the life of Job from what happened to him within the crisis and how he responded. I'll be sharing with us five things that happened to Job in the midst of his crisis. And these five things might have happened to you or may be happening to you right now. The good news is that you are not alone. Someone also went through the same and it came out on the other side. However, how did Job respond to this crisis situation in his life? So we look at five things that happened to Job in the midst of the crisis. Number one, according to verse 15 to verse 21, Job lost every good thing that he had in one single day, in just one day. I'm sure that is not your story. Whatever you have lost, you probably did not lose them just in one day. It took you weeks or months. But for Job, the story was, was critical, was, was bad, was tragic. He lost everything that he had going for him in just one day. As one servant was coming in with the news of the loss of his enterprise, his livestock, as other invaders came into what he had and they besieged him and took away every good thing that he had, another servant was coming in with the bad news of the house collapsing upon his children and everyone dying just in that moment. So it was one bad news to the other. Job lost every good thing that he had going for him in just one day. Number two thing that happened to Job in the midst of that crisis 
was that he chose to worship God and that's profound just immediately after it was recorded that he lost every good thing in his life in one single day he took a decision to praise God to worship God and that is profound when you do not have all the answers you have done all the good thing that you know to do you have done everything well everything right you have a, a well cultured family your business you run it well with the fear of God and you are faithfully serving God and yet you find yourself in the midst of crisis learn from, from Job in the midst of his own crisis he decided to worship God in verse 20 and verse 21 the Bible says, Job arose and rent his mantle, he mourned, he wept, he mourned, he shaved his hair and he fell upon his face to the ground and worshipped. He worshipped God despite the crisis that he suffered. So that is a lesson to us that we should be open to God as being sovereign, as being all-knowing. Because we are limited in knowledge and information, we may not know the exact reason or reasons why this crisis is upon us. So just like Job in the midst of this crisis, the challenge to you and to me is that we should learn to lift up our voices of worship and praise to God as the all-knowing God. And the grace to do that, may the Almighty make available to us in the name of Jesus. This, the third thing that happened to Job in the midst of the crisis was that his physical body was afflicted. His physical body was afflicted. His health was attacked. Physically, he lost his strength. He lost his health. And this may be speaking to someone out there that had been affected or infected by this virus. It is only your physical body that was affected or that is affected. It is only your physical health that was attacked. Learn from Job, who also went through the midst of this crisis with affliction, with sickness, with disease. Number four thing that happened to Job in the midst of this crisis was that, and this is very, very serious, this could be very, very painful, was that his closest confidant turned against him and despised him. The person who you would have said he had as his only person that he could speak with, he could confide in, he could take solace from. His wife turned against him and said, Job, what did you do against God really with all your being faithful to God? And the wife said to him, curse God and die. Cause God and die. That was what he got from his closest confidant according to verse 9. Then the fifth thing that happened to Job in the midst of this crisis, similar to the first one, to the fourth one, is that his friends who came to comfort and to console him turned to begin to criticize him. His friends who were supposed to stand by him in the midst of the crisis, who were supposed to see how they could help him come out of it, turned to criticize him turned against him and began to throw questions at him. And just in case you are also in that situation, you are not alone. People that you thought could help you, people that you thought could have listening ears to send a help to you, to send support to you, to send palliatives to you, seem not to be able to help you, seem to be helpless themselves. And instead of really, really helping you, they are complicating the situation for you. You are not alone. Look at what Eliphaz, Job's first friend, said, according to Job chapter 4, verse 8. He said, mm, Job, maybe you are reaping the reward of your wickedness. Wow. Someone that came to console him, to comfort him, suddenly began to speak gruel some painful words against Job. He said, maybe it is because you are reaping the reward of your wicked, wickedness. The second friend of Job, Bildad, he said Job was a hypocrite. Maybe there is something Job had been hiding that suddenly God had brought to the open by bringing this terror, this problem, this tragedy upon him. His second friend, Bildad, called him a hypocrite. And then his third friend, according to Job chapter 11 verse 14, Zophar said Job 
was suffering from the consequences of his iniquity. So you may also have these kinds of friends around you, so-called friend in the midst of this crisis. You are not alone. Friends like Eliphaz, friends like Bildad, and friends like Zufa, who were supposed to comfort and console Job, but were turning against him. So all this befell Job in the midst of the crisis. Now, the story did not end there. The good news is that there is always the other side that God is taking you to. He that brought you into the crisis, who saw you came into the crisis, who is sustaining you in the midst of the crisis, beloved, is also faithful to take you out of the crisis to the other side. So let's see what the other side looked like for Job as we also believe God that it will make our lives after this crisis, out of this crisis, better than our lives even before the crisis in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, so the process of Job coming out of this crisis, let me share them with you quickly. As long as Job was replying his friends who were attacking him and who were misrepresenting his situation, misplacing his situation for being that he offended God, he sinned against God, he was a hypocrite or he did something that was negative, the fact that Job kept responding to them kept Job in his situation, kept Job in his circumstances. If you look at some chapters down the line, after chapter 11, we saw how Job was responding to the attacks and to the negative words of his friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, Job was responding to them. And as long as he was responding to them, he remained in that situation. So I don't know how you have been handling this crisis situation. Have you been upset? Have you been bitter? Have you been angry with anyone? either with the government or with um, even China or with the medical um, practitioners or with whoever, I want to encourage you to call it off now. It's not time to throw, throw blame at anyone or to pass negative comments about the situation that we are all in now. So what did Job really do to begin to come out of this crisis situation? The Bible takes us all the way to Job chapter 42. So, beginning from Job chapter 11 all the way to Job chapter 42, Job had to wait. He had to get the process right to come out of his situation, to come out of the crisis. So, the same word of God is coming to you today as God prepares you to victoriously and triumphantly come out of this crisis situation to the other side of blessings, prosperity, fulfillment, promotion, increase on every side in the name of Jesus. All right, so we see in Job chapter 42, verse 1 and 2, these are the two profound scriptures that began the coming out process of Job out of his crisis. Job chapter 42, verse 1, the Bible says, and then Job answered the Lord and said, okay, so after God had asked Job several questions about the creation of the world, about the growing of babies in the womb, about how God fashioned the universe, and Job could not give God an answer. In God's sovereignty, he showed up to Job and let him know that beyond his human understanding of his situation, God knows better. God has the final say. God has the ultimate answer. God has the solution. So when God asked Job all these questions in the previous chapters before chapter 42, Job responded to God. Instead of responding to his friends who were criticizing him, he responded to God. And then in verse 2, Job says, God, I know that thou canst do everything and that is the position you want to come to in the midst of this crisis and you say to God I know that you can do everything Job said I know my Redeemer liveth I know my Redeemer liveth I know my Redeemer liveth he liveth forevermore the same thing I want you to begin to say at this time of crisis and pandemic say to yourself from time to time 
I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that God knows about this situation and he knows how to bring me out. And this was the position Job took. He says, God, I know that you can do all things. And this is the place you must also come to, to acknowledge that God will bring us out of this situation and that he can do all things or, and that he has done all things well and he will do all things to favor us. All right, so post-crisis, what became of the life of Job? After God brought him out of the crisis, what became of his life? As I believe God also for you, that the experiences Job had after the crisis experience will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So the life of Job after the crisis began to unfold, began to be revealed when he prayed for his friends. So my dear friend, my dear viewer, I want to encourage you that at such a time as this, take time out to pray for others. So my friend, I want to encourage you just the same way Job did in Job chapter 42 verse 10 by praying for his friends as God commanded him. So God is commanding you and speaking to you also right now. Come out of your problem. Come out of the effect of this pandemic. Come out of the effect of this crisis. See beyond what is happening to you and begin to pray for people who are suffering from the effect of this crisis. As Job prayed for his friends, Pray for the government. Pray for those who are suffering from one loss or the other. Pray for those who are helpless at this time. Pray for those who are infected and those who are afflicted. Go ahead and pray all manner of prayers for all those who are suffering the negative consequences of this pandemic. Because that in itself is the secret God will use to also bring you out of this crisis as he did for Job. So Job prayed for his friends and God turned around his own captivity and blessed him twice as much as he was blessed before the crisis. So pray all manner of prayers just to see God rise in help for those who need help at this time. For then God will also arise for your own need and turn the situation around in your favor. So what were the aftermath effect of Job responding to God by praying for his friends, by praying for those who needed help and mercy from God? So we see that three things happened to Job as soon as he prayed and interceded for his friend in the midst of his own crisis. Number one was that there was restoration of valuable relationships, relationships that he had lost, family members, friends, acquaintances, loved ones, business associates, partners that had been separated from him before. The Bible says, then they all came unto him, according to verse 11, his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintances before now came unto him. God, by the power of favor, by the force of favor, bringing in a new season for Job, began to draw all these people back to Job for them to help him in his new life after the crisis period. Number two was that Job was kind to them. Job did not blame them for, for separating from him. Job did not blame them for leaving him, for despising him. When they came back to Job, as God brought them back to Job, Job was kind to them. The Bible says in that same verse 11, and did eat bread with him in his house. So whatever Job had left in his house, he used it to entertain his friends, his family members, his acquaintances, his business partners, his associates, everyone 
that God was bringing back into his life. Job entertained them. He was kind to them. He was nice to them. So friends, it's a good time to be nice to someone. It's not a time to be touchy, to feel irritated, to feel aggravated, bitter, or angered. No, it's a time to as much as possible show love, kindness, and affection towards others and responding to the needs of others. So Job, as we see here, entertained all those who came to pay him a visit. And then the third thing that we see is that Job attracted favor from all of them. And this is very profound. Wealth is in people. God has invested wealth in people. So when you connect with people, you respond with love to them at any point in time, especially in the midst of crisis, as God intends to bring you out. What happens? You command the favor of God from them. The Bible says everyone that came to Job in that same verse 11 came back and were bringing to him pieces of money and all forms of gold and resources. And this is profound. In just one chapter, Job lost everything good in his life, his family, his children, his enterprise, his business. And also here, in just one verse, Job chapter 42, verse 11, we see the consequence, we see the aftermath effect of the restoration that Job encountered. Job had restored to him all the relationship he has lost. Job had restored to him all the past opportunities and all the resources he had lost. Everyone that came back into his life after the crisis brought him money, brought him resources. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus that everything you have lost to this crisis, to the effect of this pandemic, either in your family, in your career, in your business, or even in your ministry, as you come out of it, God will connect you with people that he will use to restore them to you in the name of Jesus. The business opportunities, the contracts, the monies, the resources, every good thing that you have lost, they shall be restored unto you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So we see that essentially the later end of Job was far greater and better than his beginning and that is what God wants to do for you your beginning may be small your later hand shall greatly increase for your shame God will give you double for your losses God will give you double in the mighty name of Jesus so I want to encourage you dear viewer just in case you've not responded to the love of God through the salvation of Jesus Christ the Bible says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest the first response you can give to God is a response for salvation. Ask him to come into your life, to touch you, and to give you a brand new beginning. So that at the end of this crisis, you will have new songs to sing, songs of testimony, songs of lifting, songs of getting better, songs of growing stronger, songs of everything indeed turning together and turning around for your good indeed in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much for being a part of the Coming Out series today. I'll be coming to you with other videos as we share together insightfully from the word of God as to how to come out of this crisis, period. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button to get videos like this when I drop them here. My name is Olumide Odesuya. See you in my next video. God bless you.